In this video, what I want to do is explore what polynomials look like. Okay, so we've seen um, previously what linear functions look like. So we know that they're straight lines. We also know what quadratics look like. We know that they're all parabolas. But what do cubics look like? What do cortics look like? What do quintics look like? Okay, um, and the higher order um, the polynomial, um, some funny things start to happen. It really depends on the order of the polynomial and how many terms it has, um, which affects the shape. Now, what I want to do in this video is to focus mainly on cubics, but I also want to show you what some cortics and quintics look like as well, just to give you kind of like an idea. Now, let's start off with um, reminding ourselves of quadratics. So, for quadratics, we know that in general, um, if you have a positive, so if you have a positive x squared, then the shape will look like that, a positive parabola, like a happy face. And if it's a negative x squared, then it will be a sad face, okay? So it'll be an upside down parabola. So there is gonna be a slight difference between uh, x cubed and minus x cubed. So they're the first two that we might as well look, like, look at. So y is equal to x cubed. What does this look like? So if we think about this logically, then when x is 0, y is 0, and so it must go through the origin. And as x increases, so x is 1, x is 2, x is 3, we're going to get 1 cubed, 2 cubed, 3 cubed, so 1, uh, 8, 27. So it increases fairly quickly, and so the curve must look something like this. And when you get into the negative x's, you get minus 1 cubed, and minus 2 cubed, and minus 3 cubed. So you're going to get minus 1, minus 8, and minus 27. And so it's down in the negative range. And so the curve does look something like this. This is y is equal to x cubed. Now, if you then look at y is equal to minus x cubed, OK? then you're looking at minus 1 cubed, minus 2 cubed, minus 3 cubed. And so the curve will look like this, and from the other direction, like that. Okay. So y is equal to minus x cubed is reflected either, you can either see it as being reflected in the y-axis, or being reflected in the x-axis. Okay. So that's, in general, what x cubed looks like. But that isn't the whole story. That's not what, in general, cubics look like. OK, so that might seem strange, but it's true. OK, so you can get different shapes of cubics. So that's like one kind of shape of it. But what you can have is a shape that looks like this. Okay, this is also the shape of a cubic. And what we find is that we're also going to be thinking about, well, how many solutions does it have? How many times does it cross the x-axis? So potentially, it might only cross the x-axis at one point, okay, like so. But if I draw it again, we could have the x-axis here, so the curve is just brushing the x-axis at that point, much like we would have seen for a parabola, when the parabola just brushes the x-axis. Or we could have three distinct real solutions. Okay, so three distinct intersection points with the x-axis, depending on the shape of the curve. Now, all three of these are positive 
x cubed examples. So they might be like x cubed plus 2x squared uh, minus 3x minus 5, for example. But all three are examples where you have a plus a positive x cubed. And this can be identified from seeing that they're all starting in the bottom left and ending up in the top right, very much as our positive x cubed did here, starting in the bottom left and ends up in the top right. Okay? So if you're looking at a minus x cubed, then we can do similar diagrams for these. So for a minus x cubed, you could have a situation that looks like this, or in a similar way like this, or this. Okay, so these are all positive x cubed, and these are all negative x cubed. Okay, so in this way, you can start to see that there are variations in the shape of cubics. But in the majority of cases that we'll meet, we'll probably be looking at this type of shape. Okay, um, but if it's a translation of x cubed, then it will look more like that. So you can see that there's these two humps, effectively, but only kind of one here. Kind of, well, it's not really a hump. It's, got, it's as we'll see later on in the course, uh, we would refer to that as a stationary point or an inflection point in this case. We've got two stationary points, a maximum and a minimum, in each of these. So this is what cubics look like. So what about cortics and quintics? How can you extend that? Well, because cubics can potentially have three solutions, okay, so like we have there, a cortic can potentially have four solutions. And so a cortic could potentially look like this, where you have one, two, three, four solutions. And a quintic would have five. So one, two, three, four, five. So what it does is it adds an extra twist in the graph. And this doesn't mean that all cortics look like this and all quintics look like this. That's not true. It's a good idea to find a graphical package, um, either a one on a computer or as an app, and just start playing around with these just to see what the curves look like. Okay? But for cubics, this is really going to be the important stuff going forward, okay? especially when we get around to sketching them.